Today I'm going to bring Chance and Candy over to the training barn. I'm going to work on getting Candy handled a little bit more and I'm also going to work a little bit more on leading with Chance. So I just start working with him pretty much as soon as he hit the ground. Well, he's going to be a nice little horse. We'll give him a minute to settle down and I'll come back in here. I'll get Candy separated. Um, we'll put her in the chute here. The main issue that we're trying to eliminate with her is the striking. And the safest place to really do that is inside the chute. Our main goal with her is just to get her gentled and used to people, at least to the point where she's not trying to kill them whenever they touch them. Um, I'm just gonna give her a minute to settle down in the chute too, and I'm gonna go ahead and just let the baby hang out right there with her. That might help soothe her a little bit, and then I'll come around and start handling her. So it's pretty much like I'm starting over, pretty much from where I started when I was working with her when she was still pregnant. So she's thinking about touching me, but she's also thinking about biting me at the same time. I might even start bringing her in here every day again because when she was still in here and she was still pregnant I was working with her twice a day. I know I say a lot of time I don't like using treats but when it comes to gentling horses I don't mind to use them. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this halter on her. I'm not going to try to get her to lead her anything today because just the way she is in the chute when I'm touching her she's trying to bite me. So I'm just gonna get this on her, see if I can get at least to the point where we were before she had um, Chance, where she was letting me pet her forehead and just kind of mess with her everywhere. And then if she does well with that, I'll give her a treat. And I'm probably just gonna stick it in the bucket and give it to her instead of getting my hand in the way because she is trying to bite. I'm pretty much just petting her with this until she stops trying to bite. She let me touch her there, but then she kind of freaked out with it. Ooh, she almost got my finger. So if I kind of put my hand back here behind this rope too, I can work on petting her cheek and also be in a controlled area where she can't get around and bite me. And when she settles, I'll just walk away for a minute. That was so much better. See, it's not all bad. There you go, mama. Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? Got my full halter here. And my extra long lead rope. Uh, last week I put a halter on Chance and I led him around just a little bit and got him to start learning how to give to that pressure. Um, he didn't do half bad, but if anybody's ever halter trained the baby before, they know kind of what it looks like. And it's a lot of fighting, trying to get away, flipping over backwards. I am putting the halter on on the wrong side, I know. But this is the side that he let me get up to. Um, last week too, he did not want you touching his head. He'd be fighting, trying to get away. This week he's doing a lot better with that. So we'll see how we retain the information for leading. And it's just pressure and release, just like everything that has to do with training horses. You put pressure on, as soon as they give to that pressure, you release that pressure. And eventually, They'll just lead right up and you won't even have to put that much pressure on it. He might try to get away. I'm going to set my hands up until he stops and I'll relax. I'll ask him to lead off again. Set my hands if he's trying to get away. And as soon as he relaxes, I relax. Right there.
again, this is the second time we've worked on the halter. You gotta remember too, when you're working with these babies, they don't have very long attention spans. So you gotta give them breaks. Gotta let them think about it. So now another thing that you wanna work on with your babies when they are still babies is picking up their feet. And I have already worked on him quite a bit with picking up his feet. So as he settles, I'll settle. The same thing with these back feet. You might wanna kick a little bit, it's fine. I'm just gonna keep it until he can settle. And as soon as he settles, I'll go ahead and just let, drop it down, let him rest it, and I'll give it right back to him. We've done this, you know these things. It's a lot easier when they're babies. And over time, they will become a lot better with it. Eventually, he'll be that horse that you just touch him on that leg and he'll pick it up for you. There you go, kid. He's still gonna need a lot of work, but starting this young, he will be a lot better off because of it. We're gonna keep working on that with him. The first couple times I did the at least picking up the feet with him. He did really well, but I mean, then again, he was also only a day and two days old in the last couple times I've done that. Now he's three weeks old and he's had the chance to, I guess, conspire with his mother. So we're just gonna keep working on both of them and um, hopefully here soon, Candy will be a lot more easily handled and Chance will be leading like a champ. Dr. Nancy and I are actually having a race and she is much faster at this job than I am. But we are getting ready to go to the Navajo Nation and Hopi Nation um, to help with an equine welfare uh, program out there. And horses will be getting gelded, um, also dewormed. We're providing the dewormer. Um, during COVID, ivermectin wormer was uh, becoming very scarce and getting very expensive. So I bought some before it, it all disappeared and we have more than we need. So we are donating it um, to this program um, and it's gonna be very, very fun. Uh, there is a, a documentary on Amazon Prime video if you'd like to watch and see um, what it was like when we were out there before. We're providing all the um, gelding costs uh, for this. So any stallion that comes in that needs to be gelded, we're covering the cost on that. Um, it's pretty exciting. Uh, last year I did not go. Um, Haley and Macy went and they did a great documentary on it, but this year we get to go. Definitely looking forward to this trip. It'll be, it's a new, exciting thing, good reason to be going. And uh, I've actually never been to that part of the U.S. before, so it'll be great to see that part of the U.S. And I'm gonna sneak in a little few extra days on the way back. So again, that good work-life balance since I tend to live here a lot, try to spend a little less days here. My hair is straight, I'm sure people notice that. I flat ironed it and we're gonna be in a very dry climate, so um, most likely my hair will be straight the entire time on this trip, unless I get too hot and jump in a water trough or something to cool off. But uh, yeah, this is me with straight hair. So my efficiency on boxing things comes from years of competing with Rigo and the guys at the local tomato farm back home. So putting together boxes, the whole nine yards. So um, yeah, this, it comes a natural talent. After you've worked with them, you can't break that habit. Yeah, she's much faster than me. I'm trying, but. Rigo's trained me well. bright light. Yeah, we got some excess. The third eye lid is starting to creep upward. It's starting to point outward also, but 
unfortunately those are some of the more minor issues because being a gray always keep a check on him and unfortunately we are starting some major creep of melanoma growth that had not been there previously but is now coming on full force and that's not a good thing for him unfortunately so because again any of the grays we check so and we done him a good over probably february when he had an adoption appointment these are all new since then mr hawaii that is bad news especially as fast as they're growing no one the last time he had a really good complete check unfortunately um and that's one thing, melanomas aren't always predictable. Sometimes they're slow growing, sometimes they're fast growing. Unfortunately, his are fast, which is, has a worse prognosis because that means they're more extensively spreading inside that we aren't seeing at the same time that they are outside. Yeah, it worries me more of what's going on internally with it appearing that fast than we know when it wasn't there at his last good overall complete. And he's been on good feed and he's... Mm -hmm. He's sweet as he can be, just the cancer's catching up with you darling i'm sorry i'm sorry darling i know i know sweetheart you love treats i know i know you're my treat hog i know he's a good yeah we noticed on mr hawaii his uh, third eyelid was showing some not quite normal the best way to describe it they're like okay like go ahead go ahead and pull him in we'll take a look at it uh, that ended up being the most minor issue uh, because, yeah, there's some suspicion that has me thinking probably going to be squamous cell carcinoma if I biopsied it. But doing a complete once over on him, uh, there are multiple melanomas under his tail that weren't there at his last complete physical, which is uh, not a good thing because if they're growing that fast, they're internally also, and that's going to be a major issue for him. looking I know I'm being nosy lady just set it flat oh it looks so much better her angles are so much her angles better. Are better I mean we this part I can deal with the scar tissue and you know that way the main thing is the alignment down here more long term that's my main yeah we may shorten this tomorrow just to see how she does with it shorter on keeping her angle right so um, we'll consult with Elijah before we go trimming on that. Yep, I think we shorten tomorrow with Elijah, sweetheart. Then I can be working on the swelling down the back of your tendon then. Let's shorten it and then we will see how you do and then we'll work on that little bit of swelling. How's that? Does that sound like a game plan? She's like, I want to turn out. I know you do. I want no, you to go running. So through the field running, I know. I mean, she's all, it looks so good. I mean, like, just compared to where we started. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I can live with a little bit of the, the swell in there. I would say, as long as we're functional. <laughs> she goes, are you edible? <laughs> so, I know she's feeling better, at least. Yeah. Yeah, her asymmetry is so much better. Yes, so I would say. You're working progress. So much better. Working progress. But at least we're making progress. That's the main thing. We make progress. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Him and Bob will have fun together. Imagine what they can get into at night. Oh, no, no, no. Nothing is off limits with Bob. <laughs> This is Glimmer. He's in ongoing treatment for his ear plaques. And so we pulled him in today to work on that. Not bad. I'm gonna have to pull off some crusties. So I might have to give you a little extra more sedation. I'm gonna try to pull out some of the crusties. Yeah. Oh yeah, that yeah, one's starting to come yeah. back. It's trying yeah. to. It's, but that's okay. We know it's a long process, so, yeah. but yeah, I'll pull off some crusties. He's like, but I'm getting drunk already. But not enough to pull crusties off. Yeah. 
I'm just pulling off the little bit that's tried to regrow, which is again, not nowhere like he was originally. So again, we knew going into this, this was gonna be a long process and which it, that's what it's proven to be. But again, it's still not bad as it was and then we'll just have to keep, keep up our treatments until again, some of them were months in that trial study that I used as a reference of what was gonna be the best course of action on him. But yeah, I'm still, I mean, I'm still happy with your ears. So we're just gonna be at it probably most of the summer. Yeah. Maybe you have pretty ears by fall when it cools off and the flies go away, so. You're being a good darling. I'm gonna say you are a sweetheart. You tolerate that very well. Despite how much he, you know he hates it. I, I like. mean, seriously, I know, I mean, he hates it. And what I've done today is I topped him off with a little bit of xylazine afterwards to make it where he wouldn't stay drunk forever. That seems to have worked too, is just give him a little top off of it. You are free from me until the 23rd. We work with this organization in Brazil and um, they're having a feed shortage issue. And so we're getting a Zoom meeting on with Dr. Nancy to talk about equine nutrition and what works down there, what resources they have. Rebecca's our interpreter and um, we'll be hopping on soon. This is your first time with an interpreter for your, yes. using your veterinarian <laughs> medicine. We'll see what happens. <laughs> you got your list here. Okay. Originally what we were thinking is it would cost over $13,000 a month to feed the horses they have in their care. And that's our US currency, um, which is very high. Um, so we're gonna try to see if there's something we can do to, to make it easier. Rebecca looks so serious. <laughs> like now is where my language skills are tested to their limit. Oi, tudo bom? Tudo bom. Essa é a doutora Nancy, ela trabalha aqui como nossa veterinária. Ah, às vezes a gente recebe alguma doação. They had, they had a mayor who went to the hospital to get a surgery for colics and they're already with 30,000 reais, which is, we'd have to do the estimation, but it's very high. Uh, what's the quality of hay they're able to find right now? Ela gostaria, a doutora Nancy gostaria de saber qual é a qualidade da, do feno que vocês estão conseguindo arrumar. Doentes, os outros a gente não consegue. Ok, mas o, vocês não conseguem porque não tem o, o, a e forma tem financeira ou porque não? Ok. Mas então, se vocês fossem comprar, qual é que seria? So, deixa eu só explicar aqui para ela rapidinho e eu já escuto ah. você. So, basically, she was asking, do you want to know what they have or what they could acquire? So, I'm saying what matters is what they would be acquiring if they had the financial right. means. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. what, because they're only buying it for horses who are in absolutely desperate need, like underweight. They're not buying it for all the horses because they can't afford it. How many horses? Yeah, how many are in the... How many are in that category? Yeah. Uh, quantos dos cavalos que vocês têm agora estão tendo feno? Agora desse momento, deixa eu contar aqui. She's counting them. Okay. So ten of them are. Okay, ten of them are only eating the feed and uh, eating the corn but it's not specifically just corn. It's like a broken down fermented version that cows eat of corn. Is it, is it silage? I, I, yes. Uh, basically she's saying it's not good long-term for the horses. It affects their bones and they get like side effects from it, but for short term. Short term, it's a patch through, okay. So they've not had an issue with it thus far, mm -hmm. but long-term it's not very sustainable. Horses aren't designed for fermented feed. That's a rumen issue with cows. Right. That's, that's why they're running into the colics. Yeah. Is, yeah. Explain that to her. Então, o que ela tá explicando é que... A... E ela comeu sacolas plásticas. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, the reason why the horse, the mare that was just in the hospital, who she now owes the vet mm -hmm. for the surgery, mm -hmm. is because she actually ate plastic bags. She Ela was... She came from the slum. Mm -hmm. She was, was just trying to survive. She yeah. ate plastic bags in the college. So she impacted with that, yeah. Yes. We don't have to worry um, about the feed as much, okay. Yeah. But 
the, that's the issue they're running into colics isn't only derived from that, but she's aware mm -hmm. that it's going to escalate to that eventually. But it's been very nice talking with you. And hope, yeah. hopefully we've Perfect. answered some of your questions and explained how horse rescue works in the U.S. I will send some money, emergency money, to help with these 14 horses and then you can fundraise on your end and maybe help. Deu para entender? Deu para entender. Ok, tá bom. Yes, you're doing a great work. Keep it, keep it up. It was a pleasure meeting Dr. Nancy. So nice to meet her, Will. She hopes that we can continue working together and helping the horses. Hopefully That's someday. our mission. Hopefully someday we can bring her to you. Se Deus quiser, a gente pode trazê-la para conhecer você em pessoa. And help, help more horses down there. Tá bom, esperando. She'll be waiting. She's looking forward to it. It'll be really good. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. So it's very interesting working with an organization outside of the United States. Um, I try to help them. We, we do international grants but we can't give a lot. So in this uh, Zoom meeting, we were I was trying to help her with fundraising ideas, and then Dr. Nancy was also helping her with, um, it's, it's very different down there, but as far as nutrition and then some quality of life issues, it's, it's very much different. One of the biggest things is they're, in Brazil currently, it's kind of like we were 100 years ago. They're still viewed as property, and just like cattle now, when they get ill, issues, lameness, things like that, their sense of slaughter to call out that way, they still view the horses that way of it's better for them to be slaughtered than it would be to just euthanize to end the suffering. So it's amazing that Brazil is such a big em or exporter of beef to the U.S., meat to other countries. Like I just looked up, they're the 11th largest exporter of horse meat. I mean, there's food safety issues, even if you don't agree with, you know, or agree with eating horse meat, the human safety issue part of it too. So it's a multi-factorial issue that's not got one easy solution for them. So we're gonna start fairy day in the vet barn with Miri and Ginger. Uh, Miri has to get her shoes reset. Um, and Ginger, we're gonna hopefully be able to bring her toe extension back a little bit to get her more natural breakover. got a really good growth rate in her feet. She's putting out a lot of foot and she's putting it out in good proportion. That's a good thing. That's what we like to see. So at this point, we're pretty certain and we've yet to, yet to have Dr. Lydia look at her, right? Yeah. She's not been out here, okay. So unless she has a different opinion, I think the consensus is that this is gonna have to be removed. She does have coronet back to here that's pretty sound. So this might grow back a little further, but her, her buttress is very, very compromised and not going to, uh, this isn't gonna find its way back to where it's supposed to be. So she'll probably be permanently in some sort of heel support shoe, either a bar shoe or a, a G bar or a lateral support shoe, something like that, just to keep her from racking her joint. <laughs> so that's the, that's the pour in, that's the pad. So that molded itself to, to fit the frog. This is what was taking uh, a good bit of the weight of the foot and distributing it across the sole of the frog to keep it off of her wall here. Uh, the foot's looking good. Okay, good. Um, I mean, obviously, 
that's what it is. Right. But the rest of the foot is healthy. She grew out a ton. Um, didn't get any sort of like thrush infections or anything from being under a pad, which is good. We are getting ready to put the pour in pad, which is gonna help support her foot um, a little bit better, especially at that corner where she doesn't really have a heel. Let it be. Uh, Maybe a little more. A little more, just a skosh more. Okay, that's good. There. Yep. Yeah, I like that. That's that's clean. It's pretty. Hey there, crazy girl. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they want me to trim something. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, Ginger's you. like, oh no. <laughs> so Keith's gonna go ahead and uh, and cut this toe extension back a little bit, and then we'll we'll pretty it up again. Um, she's to the point. She is she's stretching out like she's supposed to, um, and she's to the point where she doesn't need this much extension anymore. So we're just gonna back it up a little bit. As, as well as it could have. No issues. We got done plenty, we got done what we needed to. Got Miri's feet fixed up and her shoes reset and that's all looking really good. And got Ginger's extension cut back, so it's also good to have that done. We are headed off to the Navajo Nation. Um, and the Hopi. And the Hopi Nation. It's going to be a lot of traveling. We're driving up to Nashville tonight. Uh, Dr. Nancy is and Haley and Macy are gonna be uh, joining us at the airport at like 5.30 in the morning we fly out and then we're not coming back until like the 18th. We're gone for a while um, and I'm super excited about going out and helping. Um, there'll be a lot of veterinarians out there, veterinarian students. We're covering all the gelding cost uh, for this event. We're also donating um, antibiotics and uh, medication to help with the gelding operations. So um, it's gonna be quite the trip and uh, I'm excited about it. It is my birthday month, so um, I'm enjoying my last year in my 30s. And uh, so this is kind of a birthday trip for me too, I feel like. I will be heading off to Oxford, Mississippi here in a few minutes, Clint C used to run a campaign, citizens campaign against the Big Lick. So I'll be going down to Oxford to get all of his banners, his pictures and computers, everything that we need for Tony and I to take over the program. I was interested in adopting out another Mustang. So I started talking to Angela about it and she got a hold of the BLM. And as of today, she is no longer an untitled Mustang. She now has a title and she belongs to me. So she will make Pepper a good buddy to hang out with until I introduce them to their new brother and sister. Wild animal. Beautiful. <laughs> She's new, she can't look pretty. Beautiful. So she is officially titled now. So, yeah, that's, that's awesome, that's good news. Cool, well, thank you. You're welcome, thank you, Corey. 
I have my trailer today because I'm actually bringing Winnie home. And I figured while I have my trailer here, I'm going to just work on trailer loading everybody that I can. So in other words, if I can get them caught and if they lead well, then I'm gonna bring them over here and work on loading. When I am unloading trailers, I do like to have them back out. Uh, there's just, I've heard of things happening when you let a horse go out face first, they have a higher likelihood of tripping and hurting themselves. So I like to back out all the horses that I load. Um, if you wanna make sure that you got them backing up pretty good before you try it. So if you can get them to back up off of light pressure, then you have a better chance of get doing that there in the trailer. So I'm doing trailer loading here. There's several different ways to do it. I will start off by being inside the trailer and I just apply pressure, just like I'm teaching the horse how to lead, just to get them to come up. And as soon as they make an attempt to come towards it, I'll drop the pressure. If they're checking out the trailer right there, I'm not gonna try to put any more pressure on them. I'm just gonna let them check it out. When their attention gets away from the trailer, I'll get it back. She might freak out when this tractor goes by. So I'm just gonna hang out and wait. I'm gonna keep that pressure until she steps forward. So I can pick this foot up and set it up here and just wait for her. I'm just applying a little bit of pressure waiting for her to shift her weight forward here. Good job. Good girl. Easy. I lost the lead there. No, we're gonna do that again though. I lost the lead. At least my short end that was connected to the face, I still had the tail end of it that was around her foot. And she freaked out, I couldn't get her attention back and she just ran off. Back into it. See so about getting her back on. And even if I can't get her to back out today, I at least want her to get a couple more steps towards it. And then I'll actually just turn her around and walk her out. But I want her to start learning this. Good job, sweetie. I would like her to leave better than that. So I might go ahead and work on that a little bit more. But we did get her on. It's just a new experience for her, it's gonna be scary. So I got Winnie loaded up. I'm gonna be taking her home now. Um, I tried a different approach this time. I just worked on sending around and kind of lunging, if you will. Uh, I call it sending around, around the trailer. And then I stood here at the corner and I just worked on getting her to go up and she loaded right on after a few tries. Um, she did blow back out, but then I got her back on. I got the gate closed, and now I'm just kind of letting her settle. I'm going to let her settle a little bit, and then I'm going to go ahead and drive off. Welcome back. What a long day. <laughs> I've never come? seen so much rain. Mm. Got a lot of storms. Oxford is horrible. The entire town is roundabout. Yuck. But my car's nice and loaded. And oh, I gotta go to my office. All of it to your office? Yep. <laughs> All right. Do not disturb for, not disturb. for a long time. 
poor Glimmer's even under attack. Yeah. <laughs> Glimmer needs to go this way. Poor Glimmer. <sighs> well, I'm finally back from Oxford, Mississippi with my office totally full. My little Equinox was totally weighed down and I still have another load to go back and get. Uh, what kind of stuff do you have? Um, I got all the protest signs, protesting. I've got banners. I've got checks from 2019 that were never cashed. And I got these really nice, heavy Tennessee walkers. I don't know what it says. U.S. Senator Joe Tiding Award, U.S. Horse Majority Leader. Huh, that's cool. I don't know where he got those from, but there's two of them. I've got uh, books of all the, everything anybody who's dealt with. The other one has all the literature on the past act. Um, somewhere there is a ton of uh, S drives or the auxiliary drives. Big gallon bag full of them. She found these everywhere. They weren't in a bag, they were just thrown in a box and all these CDs are stuff that I'm gonna have to go through and see what everything is. Wow, am I even gonna find a computer to fit these? <laughs> wow. It's gonna be a long day tomorrow. I am editing Horse Rescue Heroes episode one, which is the conference. So I have all my lovely notes because I wasn't there. And I'm working on the organizations right now and figuring out their interviews. Okay, yes. awesome. And can you also tell me why this place is so empty? Well, Jason, Haley, Haley and Macy, they all went to the Navajo Nation to go and film. So it's only us three in the media room today. Nice. Yes. All right, good luck. Thank you. I did not realize how much I rely on my peripheral vision to see. <laughs> because this thing has tiny holes. <clears throat> tiny holes. And I literally have to turn my head everywhere <laughs> I want to see. Like if I want to if I want to see Isabella, I have to go like this. Cuz like I can't, see, can't see, in see in the middle, middle. you know? If I want oh, to see John, I have to go like this. Wait, like this. Ooh, now I can see both of you. <laughs> but I can't see Faye, because it's like a tiny hole. That's not horses see. No, it no it's not. No, horses see they like see panoramic. Three. They can almost see They see more than we do. Why are you doing this? I don't know, I was looking for a screwdriver and this was in the closet. <laughs> so. Best explanation ever. <laughs> That's how it happened. Thank you. Nice. I love that. Bye. I still did find a screwdriver. No. I got them on with it with my shoes on, but Cowboy's like, what in the world? That is not a horse. So Angela found me a screwdriver. I needed it so I could take the clippers apart. As you can see, they're very rusty, but I have new blades to put on them. Um, so I'm going to change those out. Cowboy is not shedding as quickly as we'd like him to. Um, so he's gonna get a body clip because it's like 80 degrees outside and he has a very thick coat and a thick mane and we're just gonna help him out. Um, Dr. Nancy is gone for the next week-ish, a little bit more than a week, um, because she is on a um, filming trip to Navajo, Navajo Nation. Um, they're doing like a gelding clinic and stuff, I think, um, which we put out a video last year about that. So you'll be able to watch the one from last year, but I'm sure we'll put out a new one about that too. So uh, we're trying to keep things together while Dr. Nancy's gone. And yeah. All right, let's get started. Yeah. He's in a super duper mood today, so 
We'll see how much of this we can actually finish. And I am gonna go shorter than that. I'm just doing the outline right now. I'm just gonna do the outline of his mane so that we don't, when we go with the bigger clippers, we don't shave off his whole mane. And I am by no means a professional body clipper at all. I've done this like a few times in my life. Never been in the show world at all. So like this is gonna be a functional clip, probably not a beautiful one, so. We're definitely not doing his whole body in these. It would take like a thousand years. <laughs> Um, now he's gonna get a bath. He's very itchy, as you can tell. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. Leap. He's like, scratch the itch. Scratch the itch. We're just gonna go through the office to keep him from rolling in the dirt. Nope, you're not leaving. <laughs> He's gonna make a cowboy, like, shaped spot on the floor. <laughs> Are you happy now, Mr. He's like, I'm just mad that you didn't let me roll outside. This is not good enough. It's not scratching my back. <laughs> Chatty, it's not a dog. Leave him alone. I'm sure he will feel much better with the shorter hair. Come on. Oh, there you go. That's not a nice rock to roll on, but okay. There's like a huge rock right under where he's laying his body. Just <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Does not appreciate all my hard work at all whatsoever. He's like, ah, oh, I'm dirty again. Oh, thank God. The first time wasn't good enough. There wasn't enough mud in the driveway. It's okay. I didn't clip him so he could be clean. I clipped him so he would be comfortable in the hot weather. He clearly appreciates it. <laughs> He's gonna get some hay. Mexico. I think we go this way. No, no, I think wait, so. we go. We're gonna try this way. So, anyway, we're out of here to New Mexico. We're gonna go help some horses. I'm doing a great big Indian Nation, Hopi, and Navajo Nation uh, horse program where we're gonna be assisting with geldings, and we're actually paying the uh, grant for all that. So, pretty awesome what we're doing. And uh, it's way too early in the morning. So, yes. we get to go see our grants in action. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, come along with us. This has been a great hotel. It's like five minutes from the airport, so it's where you want to be. You have to sleep until 3 in the morning. As is completely normal, you hurry up and leave. So now we're just waiting in line to get on the airplane. Well, to check in, the uh, machine wouldn't take our credit card, so we have to actually pay the gate agent for our bag tag. And, uh, it's 
3.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Nancy is uh, checking her bags. Um, and she's had a lot of veterinarian stuff in her bags, so... Um, stuff. We'll just leave it. We'll just lot, lots of veterinarian stuff. But uh, hopefully her... She doesn't have any problem with all her stuff in her bags, so... Stuff. So, um... I do have a joke for y'all. And uh, so I got to the airport, I knew there was gonna be lines. Like, you know, there's a line to get into the parking lot, there's a line to get on the bus, there's a line to check your bag, there's a line to get, there's a big line to get to TSA, there's a line to board the plane, but everywhere I looked, I didn't find the punchline. We're coming up here to get our gate here pretty soon, so. Between your seat. For help locating them, see your safety card. So we got off the plane in uh, Dallas-Fort Worth and we walked out of the gate A20 and our next flight is A19 and we have an hour and usually we're running across an airport through multiple gates trying to get to our destination but um, yeah we're in Dallas it's pretty cool so uh, it's early in the morning still but we're getting on the plane and landing in Albuquerque and starting the adventure in New Mexico. We get on the plane in Albuquerque it's gonna be great. So, can't wait. We're in New Mexico. It's nice and warm and it seems very dry. 12% humidity. Oh yeah, we'll be fine. It's great. It's a long, long walk. It is a long walk. That almost always is a long walk to baggage claim, isn't it? Oh. Is that Dr. Nancy? There's our, one of our yellow ones. There's the big important one. Oh! How much does that thing weigh? Sorry, I'm going to Yeah, sure. Oh, no. Okay. No. Got our rental car. And uh, Billy Macy are hanging out there with all the luggage. Tony's finding where we're going to eat. And we are about ready to hit Albuquerque and enjoy the day. Well, we've arrived at Airbnb. And uh, it's the end of uh, day one. It's uh, kind of the early part of the afternoon. But we are exhausted. So I'm sure we're going to be going to sleep early tonight and uh, tomorrow it all starts. So it's going to be going to be a very interesting trip.